Hi, everyone. Yeah, as Brian said, I'm going to be presenting uh, a primitive and protocol for doing data marketplace uh, ZK exchange uh, for exchanging private data on chain. So first, what we want to start with is just a base protocol for managing an exchange of data between two partners. Um, so we can begin with what is a basically just a simple escrow uh, contract exchange. We have a buyer locking some token within a contract. Upon some pro, uh, qualifying uh, parameter, the seller can pass some data in and retrieve the tokens, and then the data is on chain for the buyer. So this is a pretty simple escrow exchange. All it's really doing is simulating the exchange between two untrusted parties, and really does nothing more than that. But in order to do full private data exchange, we need two other properties. So one being, we want that the, that the data is going to be only available to the buyer. In this case, we see that the data is just being put on chain, meaning it's going to be public to anyone. For a full private exchange, it has to be only available to the buyer. The second one being that this data can have properties verified about it. So in the escrow example, we only have the, really uh, the verifying case to retrieve the uh, e tokens is that there is some data being passed in. We'd like to be able to verify some t uh, content or property about it in order to understand that the buyer is actually getting what they believe they're getting. Uh, and we'll actually show that we can't achieve one of these without sacrificing the other using naive techniques, and which is why we're going to end up needing ZK in order to empower both of these properties. So first, if we wanted just to sh solve the public data case, we could just simply encrypt the data before sending it to the contract. So if we look at this example here, the escrow exchange happens the exact same way, except instead of sending the raw data to the contract, the seller is going to encrypt the data with the buyer's public key, so that's only going to be available to the buyer. So that solves our first case, but the problem is now there's absolutely no way to verify what the data is going to be. Uh, with the encryption being the only thing on chain, there's not any way to verify what's actually being sent. The data is just, uh, or the seller could be sending anything and retrieving the tokens for it. If we wanted to solve the flip side, we could have a verification function on contract. Uh, the seller, so here we're going to uh, change the protocol a little bit. We'll add a pre-commitment step. Uh, the seller is going to say, I'm pre-committing to sell some piece of content, piece of data, that uh, has this mathematically provable property here, X. Uh, the buyer is going to send in tokens, uh, escrow tokens, based on that uh, attestation. And then the seller has to pass in the data, which we can verify. Uh, only upon this condition can they retrieve the tokens. So it does solve our verification case. We do verify that the data is actually giving the buyer what they expect it to be. But now we have the problem from the first case, our uh, prior uh, that the data is now going to be entirely public. The only way to have this verification is that the data is going to be public to everyone, not just the buyer. So this is why we're going to need zero knowledge proofs to kind of empower these naive mechanisms to achieve both properties. So it's best achieve, or best represented by using a case example. So here I'm going to be demonstrating with uh, the exchange of a uh, Bitcoin private key. And the reason this is, is we're going to be able to uh, take this pre-commitment step uh, using a Bitcoin address, which obviously has very uh, verifiable like value properties that a uh, user can say, uh, I want to buy the private key to that Bitcoin address. I see how much value is in it. So you'll have that uh, commitment step, the seller saying, I'm selling this uh, pri Bitcoin private key, and I can prove that I have the private key to this address. So we'll have our step two. The buyer is going to lock tokens into escrow, just as we did before. And here's where we're going to use your knowledge proofs. In our step three, our verification step, the seller is going to produce a zero knowledge proof in order to retrieve the tokens. So if we want to dive in a little bit further and see what we're doing here, the zero knowledge proof is checking two things. So first, we're going to be checking our property. We're doing our uh, function on the pri private key to verify that it's actually uh, achieving this Bitcoin address that they attested to. And secondly, it's taking our encryption uh, solution from our, data, our public data uh, problem and that it's going to be encrypting the private key with the buyer's public key. So that's going to be returned to contra on contract, so only the buyer is going to be able to retrieve it. And we'll verify the zero knowledge proof, so we'll, so, and that will be our uh, activating condition in order to retrieve the tokens. So then we have our decryption step. The buyer retrieves the encryption, and it's only encrypted with their public key, so they're the only ones that can retrieve it. So what we ended up doing in this case example is we sent the encryption of the data, so we achieve pub, uh, private data. Only the buyer can retrieve it because it's only encrypted with their public key. And secondly, we computed a verification function off-chain using zero knowledge. So this is what allows us to achieve our data verification step because we don't need to do our verification function on-chain. We can do it off-chain and just use the power of zero knowledge 
uh, as on-chain verifiers in order to do the verification that the data matches this pre-commitment step. And more largely, what we did was create a protocol for exchanging data privately between two parties that are not trusted on, based on mathematically provable properties. And so that's where this kind of can blow up into be a, becoming a full data marketplace is that this property or this attestation step can be converted to anything. So we can verify any particular mathematical provable property, uh, which can enable a ton of different examples. So some things that have already been done uh, in the past few months as we're developing this uh, project um, that kind of highlight the vastness of different properties that you can actually attest to. Uh, one being ZKML. This was developed uh, with our eSummer program back in August. Uh, someone uh, developed a protocol for exchanging machine learning model models based on proven accuracy. So you input a data set to verify, um, or uh, a data set is a committing or attesting to some accuracy on a particular data set, which can be verified on chain. Uh, another one is going to be a downsampled versions of images for private NFT transfer. So you'll see some obfuscated version of the image before purchasing it, and you can verify that the uh, base image behind this uh, matches that down sample and then retrieve the uh, fully resolution image. And the other one that, which is developed recently is Night Market, which is a marketplace for dark forest coordinates, uh, which is a really nice example because the property there is, is really sound. Um, you know, dark forest coordinates, uh, the uh, planet ID for dark forest planets is the hash of the coordinates. So based on the, uh, the hash of the coordinates, you have a really true uh, provable value to what those coordinates would be. And those links are all there. And so uh, something I've also been working on over the past couple months is uh, image blurring as a case example. So here's one thing that has been developed, your input image right here, and then the property commitment being a Gaussian blurred image that was produced in a snark. Uh, thank you to everyone from ZeroX Park and DevConnect for hosting this workshop. And additionally, uh, thank you to the developers of Massey, um, the ECDH um, encryption, uh, symmetric key encryption scheme was taken from them as well as a number of their crypto libraries. And then there's the repo again down there and um, free for anybody to talk, come talk after the session.